G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed. Well, what we're looking at today is uh, making a pipe load to go onto a bogey bolster wagon. Uh, a bit like this one that's coming around here now. Um, I don't know whether you can see that very clearly, but I'll do a close up for you. And um, what we're using to uh, create the pipes is uh, these straws. Now, this is not a plastic straw, this is actually a paper drinking straw. What's happened here in Australia is that our government has banned plastic straws uh, to save the environment. You can still get plastic straws around, however, gradually they'll disappear from the face of the earth here and we'll be left with these paper straws. Now, I got paper straws for this project and they're very, very cheap. And uh, I thought, you know, they must be fragile. But when you get these things and you do that, it takes quite a bit to tear it, folks. I mean, you can, you can tear it and break it, but it takes quite a bit of effort. If I flatten that out there and pull it, I can sort of tear it. So they, they're quite robust for what they are. And all we're doing with them is we're not tearing them, we're just uh, painting them up, uh, gluing them together and putting them on a wagon load. So I think they should last quite well. And what also happens with these, as opposed to a plastic drinking straw, is that the wall of the straw is actually quite a lot thicker than a plastic one. So that could come in handy for some of your modeling projects. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at how to put a load together. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's involved. Okay, here we go. Right folks. Uh while I'm doing this project I like to do it on my cutting mat but um, because I'm using um, PVA and paint I like to protect the cutting mat so to do that I just use some baking paper uh, any old cheap stuff will do and uh, I just cut off a bit that will uh, cover the full length of the cutting mat and then uh, cut it to size and then just use some masking tape to stick it down to the cutting mat. So I can still see my grid pattern underneath and my measurements along the side which makes it really handy. Now we take the wagon that uh, we want to add the pipe load to and uh, the uh, steel side posts there I made those out of some wire so the wagon really didn't have the proper post to start with but, but that will do. And then we check and see how many of these straws we can actually fit across, and in this case it's five. So I'm going to do uh, five on the bottom layer, four on the next layer, and three on the third layer, which gives me a total of 12 straws. So we need 12 all together. And you can see here that the straws are quite a bit longer than the wagon itself. So to um, cut them down um, I'll have to make them a realistic length. The wagon's 180 millimeters so I'll make the straws 160 millimeters. And the way I cut them is um, a way that sort of stops the straw from being crushed. What I do is I slide the straw over a bamboo skewer here which looks a bit like a dowel and uh, I put the dowel in my vise first and uh, and then of course we measure up the uh, the length that we want and I use the uh, the grid pattern on the cutting mat to help me there so I measure off 160 millimeters okay so we slide the straw under the uh, skewer Bring the knife to the uh, mark and start pulling down towards back towards yourself to try and cut through and try and keep a straight line if possible it's easy to go a bit off line and you'll finish off with a stray piece in the end but you can trim that off uh, if that happens and we're nearly there now getting there just the final bit And that's come off fairly clean, as you can see. Okay, folks, uh, now we've got our um, straws cut, we just have a look and see how they're going to look on the, uh, on the wagon. 
So we've got five on the bottom, four in the middle, three on the top. And I mean, they're only loose fit there. So what we've got to do is uh, glue them together. So the first thing to do is I lay the five out, the bottom layer onto the baking paper and uh, just stack them nice and close together there and line them up, make sure they're sort of squared up. And I use a couple of bits of steel that I've got to, to hold the sides together there, but you could use a couple of bits of wood or whatever you've got. And uh, this is just to hold them in place uh, while they're being glued. We now get our PVA and we'll put in um, a blob of glue in at each end and one in the middle, in between the straws, and then we grab uh, one of the straws for the next layer and just gently lay that in and line it up as best as you can. And then just repeat the process for the uh, straw next to that one. Three blobs of PVA. And what this is doing, folks, is actually sort of linking all the straws together. So just uh, drop them in there and just repeat the process until you get up to the top layer where you just um, follow through again with the same sort of process. Three drops of PVA with a straw on there. And then there's only one to be done. Just tap them in gently. And this will be the final one. What we'll do is we'll just leave that there to um, set. So we've just got to walk away from it now. Just leave it alone and give it some a good time to, to set. Right, once the, the glue has set, you'll see that the, the pipes are able to be uh, released and they will stay together. Um, it's quite rigid uh, once all the glue has gone off. So the next step is to, um, to paint them. And, and one of the issues with uh, painting these straws is the paper is actually wound on in a sort of a spiral sort of effect. And you can see these little white lines. And uh, it's a bit of a problem. And uh, my friend Gary on uh, Platform One suggested that uh, next time I did some that I use some uh, spray putty, which is available from uh, auto accessory stores. So I got myself some of that and I thought I'd give it a go because you, you don't want to um, have a sort of suggestion of these marks along the, the sides of the pipes or the straws, whatever you want to call them. So we've got some spray putty and uh, to hold the straws while I spray them I just I've got a, a packet of these uh, bamboo skewers that are like a square sort of setup uh, that fits nicely into one of the straws and once you get about halfway along it it holds it quite firmly so I held the uh, the uh, stack of pipes or straws with the skewer whilst I painted it and you can see that's that's what, how it comes up you can um, hold it that way before you paint it and then I sprayed it with the spray putty which is this sort of uh, grey colour fairly light colour and you can still see the marks there and uh, it's interesting to sort of contemplate whether that's going to work or not but uh, anyway we'll let the, the paint dry properly and uh, the uh, straw is going to be painted with uh, a flat black enamel which is uh, Humbrol uh, number 33 and uh, the previous ones I did came up with good with two coats of this so this will effectively um, be three coats of paint on these straws so we'll see how they go. So here's the first coat going on and uh, looks like it's okay and you don't really need to worry too much about the bottom uh, because that won't be seen anyway but certainly go right over the edges and uh, to do the the ends and make it look as though the, the whole of the inner of the, the pipe is done I, um, I've i been uh, painting all this with a brush so you get your brush uh, loaded up with paint and push it into the straw and uh, keep twiddling around in there until it's black and you can't see any white bits and um, that's how it's come up after two coats of paint. 
so it's finally had its two coats and it's very hard to see any of the marks on the side now because of the matte black. Now what I'd like to do is give the indication of uh, chalk markings on the side of these pipes you know so you know something that would sort of uh, tell you what its destination might be and I use a white watercolour pencil but I don't uh, dip it in any water I just draw straight onto the uh, onto the pipes and uh, you know you can make any destination you like and in my case uh, we've put uh, Gormo Engineering on there in this case and uh, I do both sides and uh, it, it just looks a bit crude but that's the way it's supposed to look uh, nothing fancy there folks so that's how it looks now the next stage is to add some chains because these things would have been chained on and they would have had some sort of screw link coupling in the chain but I, uh, I'm not going to go that far with this because it's just a removable load and it's just supposed to look okay but, um, and this is some chain I had, it's, it's small, you could probably use some smaller stuff if you had it uh, certainly look around and see what you've got in this case So what we do is we just lay the chain over the pipes whilst they're on the wagon and I want the uh, bottom link to be somewhere near the side edge of the, the bottom edge of, or the top edge which should be actually on the wagon there. So I lay it over on, on one side and then I go over to the other side and find the same spot and snip it off so that I've got the right length of chain there. I then uh, I'll, I'll super glue these um, uh, chains on to the pipes so with super glue I've found a good method here by just putting a blob into uh, a plastic lid or a tin lid or whatever you've got and then I'll use a bit of wire to just pick up the smallest amount uh, to allow me to drop that onto whatever I'm working on so this works pretty well instead of trying to squirt it out of the tube and getting a dirty great big blob on there uh, this is quite an effective method so I've got the blob of super glue on the end of the wire and I bring it over to the pipes and I've slid the chain back a bit from where I want it to be so I can put the super glue on and then we put the three blobs on the top there for the three pipes on top and then I'll just slide the chain back into position and it'll connect up with the super glue there like so and we'll have to do um, the chain down the side at the bottom of the stack of pipes there as well and when I'm sort of moving my chain back along the top I used to like to use a straight edge anything will do just to slide it back so it's all nice and straight on the top there and then I sort of flip the uh, pipe load onto its side so I can put a drop of super glue onto the bottom pipe and then uh, I can drag the chain over onto that and uh, it'll stay in position then and what you'll find is that, that with the position of these chains near uh, if you look at both ends and they're just near the uh, steel posts there um, the chains stop the uh, load from moving too far forward or too far back on the wagon and of course the, the posts on the side of the wagon stop the load from falling off sideways so that is literally just sitting on there as it is and uh, it's, it's removable and that's the whole idea that the thing should be removable um, and it won't go anywhere while it's going around on a train so that's what it looks like on the railway and uh, yeah I'm quite happy with that uh, I think the spray putty has been reasonably effective uh, possibly another coat of paint required for a 100% job but that'll, that'll do, that'll stand up to the 3 foot rule and there we are ready to rock and roll and that's what it looks like on the railway itself you can see the, uh, the second wagon on the right um, I still haven't made the, uh, the side posts there but uh, the load will sit on there anyway but yeah definitely needs some, <laughs> some side posts to keep it secure 
So that's how it's done, folks. Nothing really too hard about that. Uh, just a bit of time and effort and uh, very little cost. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Gourmet.